After five days of hard work, exhausted both physically and mentally, I embarked on a journey to a foreign country. My name is Daniel and I am an experienced and adventurous businessman. I am six feet tall and athletic, with a rugged appearance that belies a meticulous personality. My dark hair is mixed with a hint of gray, a testament to the countless hours I spent chasing deadlines and closing deals. I am known for my calm, collected demeanor, a quality that has served me well in my career. It was 8 o'clock in the evening when I arrived at the motel, a rather seedy hotel on the outskirts of town. Dim signs flickered above the entrance, casting an eerie glow on the cracked asphalt below. The building's facade is dated, with peeling paint adding to the dismal appearance. The interior is no longer attractive. Damp carpets and blankets that have seen too many guests carry the weight of countless stories. As I took each step that creaked on the faded linoleum floor, I felt like a stranger in a place frozen in time. When I checked in, I was greeted with a wry smile by the front desk clerk, whose name tag said she was Melissa. She had a tired look about her, as if the monotony of working in a motel had left its mark. Her ash-brown hair framed her face, and her hazel eyes shone with a hint of helplessness. The room key she handed over was an old metal key, heavy and outdated. She told me I was in room 214 at the very end of the second floor. The entire motel seemed almost deserted and I couldn't help but wonder why. I dragged my suitcase up the dilapidated stairs and arrived at room 214. As I put the key in the door lock, an ominous premonition came over me. The heavy door creaked open, revealing a room that could only be described as monotonous. Flickering fluorescent lights overhead cast a pale glow on frayed curtains and peeling wallpaper. Despite the room's shabby appearance, my fatigue overwhelmed me, forcing me to abandon my usual meticulous inspection of the accommodation. Instead, I just kicked off my shoes and flopped onto the hard mattress, longing for a night of undisturbed rest. As the hands of the clock ticked, the room became quieter by the second. I was in a state of blissful sleep when the shrill ring of the motel room phone broke the silence. Startled, I fumbled with the receiver, my bleary eyes trying to focus on the time displayed on the bedside clock. It's past 11 p.m. The voice on the other end was a little nervous, without the warmth that Melissa had pretended just now. They claimed someone complained about noise coming from my room. My confusion was palpable as my sleepy brain struggled to process the accusation. I grunted, trying to express my disbelief. I was already sleeping soundly, my dream was not disturbed by any noise, let alone any complaints. The sound continued, and uneasiness began to spread. They asked if anyone else was in the room with me, their tone becoming increasingly insistent. I assured them that I was alone and that no noise was coming from my room, growing increasingly annoyed. There was a strange pause before they asked the question again, as if searching for a crack in my resolve. The repeated probing was disconcerting, and finally, with a brief confirmation that I was indeed alone without causing any disturbance, the call ended. Dissatisfied and confused, I put the receiver back into its cradle, confused. After receiving this strange phone call, I fell asleep completely. I was left alone in the dark room with thousands of thoughts in my mind. This eerie encounter left me feeling uneasy, like a prey animal that has narrowly escaped the clutches of a predator. I couldn't help but wonder about the motivation behind the call, needing to make sure I was alone. That's when I came to the disturbing conclusion, the motel staff never called my room. No one complained about the noise. The implications of this realization were so chilling that a cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Someone or something systematically calls the phones in various rooms, 
asking about the people in the rooms and whether they are alone. The sinister nature of this revelation sent shivers down my spine and fear coiled in my stomach. My thoughts spiraled into a cacophony of terrifying possibilities. Are there intruders lurking in the shadows, looking for vulnerable victims? I was exposed and defenseless, and the thought sent shivers through my body. In that terrifying moment, I silently thanked myself for my penchant for safety precautions. I've always been in the habit of using extra deadbolt chain locks on my motel room doors. It was a small, simple measure, but it has now proven to be a lifesaver. I can't help but imagine what might have happened if I had neglected this crucial step. On the remote and mysterious island of Scotland, nestled in the tranquil and beautiful Isle of Skye, we embark on a journey that will forever change the way we think about hospitality. Our chosen accommodation for the night was a quaint B&B owned by a couple who left an indelible mark on our memories of this trip. The setting is certainly picturesque, with the stunning scenery of sky forming the backdrop for our stay. The rolling hills and pristine coast attract visitors from far and wide, offering a peaceful escape from the hustle and bustle of modern life. It is in this idyllic corner of the world that the unfolding of our disturbing experiences has just begun. We were greeted warmly when we arrived, the B&B has a charming and welcoming exterior. As we walked in, the fantasy started to crumble. We can't deny that the bedrooms are beautifully appointed, beautifully decorated and crafted with exquisite craftsmanship, demonstrating an undeniable dedication to aesthetics. Our awe was met with a disturbing warning. Nearly everything in our dormitory had placards with the stern instruction, do not touch, an unexpected warning that caused uneasiness among our ranks. The carefully arranged trinkets and decorations now resemble an exhibition, a gallery of beauty hidden behind an invisible barrier. What made us even more uneasy was that as we progressed through the process of settling into the hotel, it became more and more obvious that the couple had strict rules. Wanting to use the shower required pleading with our hosts, as if cleaning ourselves was a privilege rather than a basic human right. At 11 p.m., even precious internet access is terminated strictly on time, a curfew that plunges our nights into isolation. Most disturbing are the wife's nightly patrols, her vigilant checks on guests. Her footsteps were brisk but full of concentration, echoing in the quiet corridor at night. Her mission seems to be to ensure that everyone is sleeping and that illegal activities, such as clandestine use of the internet, don't occur. Not only were we unwelcome, we were monitored which forever disrupted our sleep. The ghost of the ever-vigilant landlady terrifies us, her presence oppressive and omnipresent. It's clear that her definition of hospitality is as ambivalent as the do not touch signs that adorn her immaculately furnished rooms. By the end of our disturbing stay, the true nature of this BNB was revealed. As we were getting ready to check out, my wife burst into our room with an accusatory air. In her view, we suck, a shocking accusation delivered with unwavering certainty. To prove her point, she opened her windows and let the Scottish wind in while demanding immediate monetary compensation for what we call an olfactory breach. There was another guest who had to check to pay for their room because our hotel was so remote and the director of the hotel took their luggage and refused to give it back. In the end, we pooled together cash to help the traveler pay for the room. But on the way out, she asked everyone if they enjoyed their stay. A few weeks ago, a gruesome incident occurred at a London hotel. It was a seemingly normal night as I stayed in a nine-person mixed dormitory with two male friends. There were three sets of three-level bunk beds in the room, and when I sat down on the lower bunk on the right, I had no idea of the weird events that were about to happen. We returned to the hotel at two in the morning, exhausted and ready for bed. 
We each found our own beds, trying to find comfort in the dark room. I lay on my side, facing the wall, and there was silence. The peace is short-lived. In the silence, I began to hear strange rustling sounds behind me. At first, I thought it was a fellow traveler going through their belongings. But as time went by, the noise escalated. A hand, cold and unfamiliar, reached out from under the quilt and landed on my hip. My heart beat faster as I turned to face an unfamiliar face, a stranger's voice instructing me to get out of my way and trying to tug at my sheets. I was taken aback and initially thought he was just drunk and disoriented, struggling to find his assigned bed. With a hint of uncertainty, I urged him to find his bunk and settle down. To my relief, he shuffled to the lower bunk of the left bunk, and I thought the ordeal was over. After a while, however, he returned and the cycle of invasion and retreat continued. My polite tone began to weaken as I implored him more and more firmly to return to the designated spot. The situation quickly worsened, and my growing uneasiness turned into trembling anxiety. In a desperate message to my friend in the bunk above me, I admitted that I had my doubts about not being able to sleep that night. I explained the disturbing situation to him. To my surprise, both of my companions were wearing earbuds and misinterpreted my repeated pleas as a conversation between me and another friend. When I clarified the seriousness of the situation, my friend became wary. I was aware of the intruder's movements as he ventured into the bathroom, and although I could see the light coming from the half-open door, I didn't dare look in his direction. My alert friend told me that the man purposely left the bathroom door open, walked around with his pants off, and tried to coax me into looking. Despite temporary relief after a trip to the bathroom, the ominous encounter was far from over. Creepy, my partner's cell phone light illuminated the room and he forcefully ordered the stranger to leave. The attacker crawled across the floor, making another menacing approach. In a rush of adrenaline, my friend took daring action, using the light and sound of his phone to fight off the menacing presence. In response, the intruder became unhinged and firmly grabbed the double ladder. It was as if he were climbing a huge mountain, with dark and sinister intentions. He lunged at my friend on the bunk above me and tried to confiscate his phone. In a frantic struggle, the two men grappled and my friend resorted to desperate measures, including swiftly kicking the intruder in the neck. But the stranger showed a chilling resilience, falling back with dogged determination. This chaotic scene provided me with the opportunity to escape and seek safety. We immediately reminded them of the horrific situation that occurred in the dormitory. Security personnel responded quickly and their timely intervention was crucial in the face of such a malicious presence. They summoned the authorities and soon after the attacker was escorted away in a riot van and officially banned from the premises. Even outside, as police held him down and waited for riot vans to arrive, the attacker was far from conscious. His performance was disturbing as he kept banging his head against an unyielding brick wall. We are still confused by the strange behavior of the intruder as he kept trying to blame my friend after security arrived. His broken English became a tool of manipulation, making twisted requests such as, come over here and see how violent this guy is.